So welcome uh, to all of our viewers who are joining. So the meetup is a continued series of ours that focuses on the journeys of elite athletes from high school to collegiate track and field and beyond in the professional world. So as you can all see, today we're joined by special guest and Streamline Athlete Ambassador, Erin Brown. Uh, but before we jump into our question panel with Erin, just gonna introduce myself and tell any of our new viewers a little bit about Streamline. So my name is Devin, I'm an employee here at Streamline App, and I also compete in track and field. I competed in the NAIA for the University of British Columbia, where I was an 800 meter champion. And I also competed for Team Canada at the World Juniors in 2012. If you're not familiar with Streamline Athletes, we are the place to be for high school athletes looking to continue competing in track and field and cross country at the collegiate level. We provide a free to use platform for athletes and we use data to help find the right team, coach and school for them after high school. If we have time, we're going to have a little question and answer period at the end of our chat, but I'm sure some of the people watching are going to have questions along the way. So please feel free to type them in and we can get to them at the end. So without further ado, I am delighted to introduce Erin Brown. Erin is a University of Southern California alumni, All-American and Canadian sprinter specializing in the 100 and 200 meters. He won an Olympic bronze medal as part of Canada's 4x100 meter relay team at both the 2016 Olympics in Rio and the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. Aaron was also a 2012 Olympian, part of Canada's relay teams in the 4x1 at the 2013 and 2015 World Athletic Championships and won a silver medal in the 200 at the 2018 Commonwealth Games. Wow, that was a lot of medals for me to read off there. So, Aaron, welcome. Uh, how are you? How's your day going so far? It's good. You know, it's a Friday. Um, got out early from practice today. Got to go see Spider-Man. So, I'm winning already. You know, it's the weekend oh. and feeling good. How, uh, how was it? Should we just turn this into a review of uh, the newest Spider-Man movie? Oh, uh, man, I don't want to spoil it, but it's, it's definitely up there with Endgame. I would say it's, it's top three Marvel movie ever. Wow. So. Okay. Take that's that what a, you want, but that's, that's my opinion, and I've heard a lot of people say the same thing. It's a really, really, really good movie. Awesome. And uh, where are you joining us from today? Uh, my home in Florida, in Winter Garden. Awesome. All right. So first, I just want to say to any of our users that if they haven't watched it, they should definitely check out the video you posted today all about Streamline. This was perfect timing. So yeah, exactly. Awesome. Totally explains how to use your profile, how to set it up. And it's all on your YouTube channel, which has a ton of other amazing content. So for any of our users here, if you haven't already gone on Aaron's YouTube, you should definitely do that as soon as our conversation ends here. Uh, but don't go yeah. away. This chat, we will save it and post it to our Streamline Instagram. So if for whatever reason you do have to jump out, you will be able to come and watch later. So the question theme for today is we're currently in the holiday season, which can be a very challenging time for training as many of us are away from our coaches, our teammates, and distracted by holiday activity. So Erin, we'd kind of love to hear some of your advice on how you balance training at this time of the year. So how do you approach your training during the holiday season? Um, I mean, this is a pretty big topic because, you know, when I was in college, um, when we we're in the holiday season, we would get a break and they weren't allowed to make us train over the holidays. So they would kind of like give us the wink, wink, nudge, nudge, like don't get out of shape, but they weren't allowed to tell us to train. So I'll, I remember my freshman year, I completely stopped training and I didn't do anything. When I went back home, I kind of just went, see, saw friends and all that. And it was good to be back home after being in LA for so long. And then when I came back, I was out of shape and they tested us because they knew like, this is what happens. And, uh -huh. you know, I, I had to kind of reinvent the wheel and get back into shape. And so I learned my lesson uh, after my freshman year and the following years, you know, I still stayed active and stayed in shape. And now as a pro, we actually usually don't get holidays off. Um, this is one of the first years that we do. This might be the first year I haven't had to practice on Christmas. And that's because it falls on a Saturday and we practice, practice Monday to Friday. Um, but he also gave us uh, Thursday and Friday off. So, you know, people have the option to go home and stuff, which is something I'm not used to. But at the same time, he always wanted to instill discipline in us and tell us that, 
you know, um, everyone else is taking the days off and taking it easy, but we want to train because we want to instill that discipline. We want to get those gains and work around the clock when everybody else is resting so that, you know, the grind never stops pretty much is what he basically told us. And, and the small days that you put together you can give you that little advantage. Um, that's the most important thing when you get on, get on the line. And what about when you were in high school? Do you remember if you if you trained over the holiday break or? Oh uh, man, high school, honestly, I didn't even really train that much. So uh, I had no discipline really in high school. I was just kind of just running, just out there, just doing it for fun. And if I was lucky enough to, you know, fall into a scholarship to go to USC. But um, yeah, high school days, I would definitely take days off and I, would come back. I mean, I'm young. I'm in high school, so I don't really get out of shape too fast there. Um, I was just naturally talented at that point. But as I got older and, and I have got into a, a more solid training pool where people are just as talented or more talented than me, that becomes more crucial. You know, when high school, I was able to get, uh, get away with it. But as I got in the, up in the ranks, you know, going from college to pro, um, everyone out there is, is, is hungry and, and they're trying to take your spot. So the little advantages you can get in staying in shape while you're training over the holidays is key. Awesome. Yeah. And what keeps you motivated, especially like this time of year, being a sprinter, I'm guessing you're doing quite a bit of base training. How do you mm -hmm. keep uh, motivated for those kinds of workouts? Do you, do you enjoy base training or is that not your favorite? I mean, I don't know anybody that really enjoys base training. <laughs> Maybe it's been pretty, pretty much just breaking down the body. And um, it's necessary though. So you gotta go through the motions, you gotta put in the work early because the harder you work in the base season, uh, the more it pays you back later on and you have a better foundation to build off of when you're getting on the moment, uh, uh, sorry, getting in the moment um, for those races, the fun part, going out and competing for money and doing what you gotta do to you know, earn a career in this. So nobody really enjoys the base season, but you know how necessary it is and you have to put in the work because you cannot just skip the base season and go into the fun part and start sprinting. It'll lead to injuries. You'll burn out. You won't have anything to rely on. It's just there, there's a reason why we go through it. Very wise, very wise words. How has, has your training been different with it? you coming off an Olympic uh, season this year? Have, have you changed a lot of your training this fall, or has it been kind of similar to what you usually do? Um, I mean, every year has pretty much been similar. I just make small tweaks here and there. So my system that's in place has been pretty good to get me to where I'm at at this point. But what I want to do to take me over the top and get to that next level, you know, challenge for those podium spots at the championships is small little things. And you get into trouble when you try to reinvent the wheel entirely and, and do completely different new things you know, reinvent a whole new regime and try to be a completely different person because you have to realize that you're so close to your goal. Like you're here and what you want is right here. And some people just like throw it all away and start from scratch and do everything different. They think I got to be a completely new person, but you just have to trust what got you this far and then make little tweaks here and there and see where you're lacking, where you can improve. So for me, it's like little things like nutrition, um, you know, working on the mental side of my performance, um, you know, technical things that I've been making mistakes with over the years and really honing in on my craft and my sprint technique with my coach and stuff, seeing where I can make gains here and there in part of the race, executing my race strategy better, and then just trusting it, you know, just knowing that I have the talent I've, I've shown over the years that I've, at this, I'm at this level for a reason, and it's not going to be these huge things that I have to change in order to get me to where I want to go. It's just small little tweaks. Awesome. And moving into 2022 with it being a new year, uh, do you set like New Year's resolutions this time, like going into January? Is that when you're breaking down your goals for, for next season? Yeah, um, that's always wanna, what I want to do. You know, I, I, I think it's great to have goals in place. Um, what gets measured gets improved. So you have to know what you're doing wrong and what you're doing right and analyze that in order to know what you can do even better. So for me, goal setting is huge and something that's critical for me as an athlete, especially as a professional. Um, I try to set goals in all facets of my life just, just so I can be a better person overall. 
Like I find that when I write it down and I have something that I'm aiming towards, I have a higher chance of actually achieving it. So goal setting is definitely something I'm going to be doing for 2022. Nice. Is that something you've always done? Like, did you, as a high school student, did you set goals for yourself no, too? No, 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 no. Oh. See, I, I was a completely different person in high school. I'm not the person I was in high school at all. Um, and that's just because I've grown and I've, I've, you know, bumped shoulders with so many great professionals in my life. And I've been fortunate to have many conversations with people who are far better than me and achieved a lot more than I have. And that's just kind of rubbed off on me. And I've, I've listened and, and pick and choose what works and what I like and what works for me as a person and kind of instilled that to grow to the person I am today. Um, so what I was in high school was just a raw, talented, young, naive kid who uh, was fortunate enough to get to where I'm at now by listening to others that, you know, instilled wisdom into me and pass it down. And that's kind of what I try to do is be the person um, for people today that I had in my life that led to me here. That's awesome. And you never know like who you're inspiring right now that the cycle just keeps going. I love your quote. Mm -hmm. You said what gets measured gets improved because I think that it can be exciting to set goals at the start of the year, especially when you are maybe in high school or you're getting more serious about track for the first time, but just writing like, I want to run faster or it sometimes it's not as motivating. Like I, you know, I want to try hard and practice like goals like that are mm -hmm. always great, but when you set a goal and you make it something that's very specific, then it's a lot easier to evaluate whether you got there or not. And at least for me, when I set goals too, I think it's really important to like, let other people in on those goals, like tell your friend yeah. or your coach or have other mm -hmm. people that you can kind of be accountable to and that can, that, su that support you. And if you're not on track for your goal, you have those people in place, whether it's, yeah, your parents, even someone that can kind of help keep you on track for achieving those. <laughs> Right. I mean, I find that sometimes people are afraid of their goals and kind of embarrassed. So it's like, if you have the goal of being an Olympian, for example, you might be afraid to tell people because they might doubt you and say you can't do it. And so you'll kind of have a goal in shadows. And if you don't achieve it, and you fall short of that goal, nobody's gonna like say anything about it because nobody knew. And I had that phobia back when I was younger. But I found that if I'm confident in my goals and I'm putting in the work and doing what I need to do to achieve that goal and, and actually putting in the action, if I, even if I had fall short of that goal, I know I did what was necessary in order to give me the best chance to achieve it. So mm -hmm. there's nothing to be ashamed of when you go for a goal and you don't hit it. You just retweak and try again. And I find that, you know, you have a better chance of succeeding when you have people really aware of what you're trying to do especially the people that are close to you that can help you get there along the way. So for example, if you don't tell people that you want to be an Olympian, people might not tell you the things that you need to know in order to get there. But if you put it out there and say, this is the energy I'm trying to put out there. This is my goal. I'm achieving it. It might be hard. It might be, you know, easy, whatever the case may be. They might say, Oh, if you're trying to do that, then you need to improve your nutrition. You need to get better sleep. You need a better coach. You need better teammates, whatever the case may be. They might help you get uh, the pieces in, in place in order to help you get there. But no one's going to help you if they don't know what you're trying to do. That's, I think that that's so relatable too, to feel like, oh, I don't want to tell people my goal because if I don't achieve it, like that's, that's so embarrassing. I have right. certainly felt that way about goals in the past, but then I kind of realized like nobody really is judging you against your goals, maybe except right. yourself. So exactly. people are going to be like, oh, wow, like good for them. Like they're really putting themselves out there or they're going after that and if someone's going to doubt you well like chances are they're not someone that's going to support you or be part of your inner circle anyways so it doesn't really matter what they think so right. I think that that's uh that's such great advice when it comes to like don't be scared to to put out your goal and it also like I don't like to use the word sacrifice because that makes it sound kind of negative but especially as a high school student I found if you have a really clear goal that people know about it does make it easier for you to say no to things that aren't going to help your goal. And I mm -hmm. think it's more relatable. People are going to understand like, oh, I can't do that because I'm actually going to practice and I right. want to back in college. And then people are yeah. going to like, oh, okay, it makes sense. Like why, you know, you can't stay out late or why you're prioritizing mm -hmm. your nutrition in a way that maybe some of your friends can't relate to. So I think that's, uh, that's super good advice. 
When yeah. we think about students like looking at their recruitment, uh, we've had some athletes where they're kind of taking a break right now because they want to take you know some relaxing time. They've been working hard at school. What do you think? Like, do you think that it's it's beneficial for athletes to to take a break from trying to contact coaches? Uh, or is the holidays a time where like you should be putting that extra effort in? Uh, I'd say that if you're feeling burnt out, it's a good time to take a break. You know, over the holidays is when a lot of people are trying to be with their families and recharge and gear up for the new year. So if you're feeling burnt out and you put in a whole bunch of work and you've been sending out letters and, you know, trying to get your grades up and, you know, work hard in practice so you can run faster times or jump higher, or, you know, throw farther, then I think it's good to take a break over the holidays. But if you feel like you're still energized and motivated to keep going and push through, then it could be a good idea to still put in the work because, you know, a lot of people are going to be relaxing. And that could be a time where you stand out because it's like, I am so motivated that I'm going to work through the holidays and I really, really want this bad. And a coach might see that and be like, wow, I really like the drive in this kid. Let me check out what he has to say. Even though I'm on break, I'll, I'll make an exception and, and read this uh, email he just sent me or letter, whatever the case is. But um, I think it just depends on you and how you feel. Uh, if you've got the energy and you're ready to do it, go for it. But if you feel like you need a break, don't feel like you're losing out too much because a lot of people might feel that way. And as long as you're taking care of what you need to do on the track and in the classroom, um, the coaches will find you and you'll put yourself in the best position eventually. Um, so I wouldn't worry too much. And uh, if anything, they should watch your video and make sure that they completed their <laughs> athlete's profile. Because exactly. that, is that at least I've definitely seen on the streamline end of things is coaches right now, maybe their athletes have gone home. They're not having set practices. So there are definitely some of them that are, looking at athletes times like they actually have a chance to have a little bit of free time for once like when practices are going on coaches are always with their athletes and that I mean that's the way it should be but I appreciate when you're trying to get recruited sometimes you feel like oh it's taking so long for the coach to get back to me so mm -hmm. if you're in a position like that I'd say maybe follow up over the holidays but if it's like a brand new conversation that you haven't had yet maybe yeah. hold on until the new year as you said unless you're feeling yeah. like really keen or you know this program's a great fit for you but I think staying true to where you're you're at that's probably the best way but it does uh, as, as you said only takes a few minutes to complete that profile and then all those coaches they can be checking out your profile exactly if you have that covered then you know you can take your break knowing that you're still visible and people can see what you're about even if you're not actively putting stuff out into the into the web so what else? I think um, our users are pretty curious to know moving into 2022, what are kind of the big goals or big events on your horizon that we can look forward to cheering you on at? Yeah, so 2022, we got the World Championships in Oregon. So that's a huge one. Um, just because, you know, it's, it's local. It's not going to be across the world like it normally is. It's a relatively close flight for me. Um, and Eugene, you know, it's always been a special place just because I have uh, had a lot of competitions there when I was at USC, you know, being a Pac-12 school and then having nationals there a lot. You know, I, I love going to Hayward Field. Um, so that's a big one. That's the biggest one that I'm, I'm aiming for is, is going to the world championships and everything just leading up to that is all about the road to, to Eugene in the summer. That's awesome. Um, and in terms of kind of your upcoming holiday plans, obviously you're going to be training, you're going to be grinding, but do you have any kind of fun holiday traditions or plans that you're looking forward to? Uh, so this is the thing is my son, this is going to be his first Christmas because he's only uh, 10 months. So we're kind of in the process of making our own traditions as a family and, you know, just being our own little unit. So uh, we're going to try some things and see how we like it, you know, do the little matching pajama, Christmas pajama clothes and stuff, take the pictures in front of the tree, uh, make the gingerbread house and all that stuff, open the presents on Christmas Eve, like one present and then the rest on Christmas Day and, you know, hone our, our traditions and make our own brown Christmas 
so yeah. we'll have something to rely on for years to come but it's still it's a work in progress that's awesome and i know uh, the holidays are kind of a time where people are kind of connecting with uh, friends and and old teammates and coaches do you have any sort of like traditions with any of your track friends i know it's a disgusting one but a bunch of my friends do a an eggnog mile where they actually have to drink eggnog it, like it's like, like the bike? eggnog like alcohol uh, in it i i think that's up to the user's discretion oh, okay. I, I don't think so i think it's just straight eggnog Good. i'm not to be honest i've never felt the uh, allure to try it myself yeah. but do you uh do you have any sorts of uh, any things like that that your your squad <laughs> would up to not quite uh we do secret santa on our team so there's that but other than that it was kind of just you know uh regular stuff um to say happy merry christmas and all that stuff and happy new year and keep going on about our day keep grinding and and practice <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. And uh, you've been putting out some really great YouTube videos. I see some of our users were commenting to, to keep the videos coming. Uh, do Appreciate you have that. a schedule for the upcoming year of uh, like topics you're going to be posting about? Yeah, um, I actually just did a long bat shoot yesterday. I had about six videos done. So I'm just in the works editing that. So uh, stay tuned. I got some stuff on Instagram coming out in the upcoming weeks. Um, it's more so just, just, it's all about track stuff, you know? So I usually just go through my uh, Reels feed and then see what's trending. And I try to put a spin on it with, you know, a tracking field background and then put a little lesson in there that people can take away from, try to either educate or entertain um, or sometimes just inspire people. Um, and just have fun with it. You know, I like to just put stuff out there for people to consume, try different stuff and see what people like, what they don't, and just, you know, know, grow my brand that way. But uh, yeah, I, I got some, some funny videos coming soon. So so make sure you check out Kingsley TV. <laughs> something, something to look forward to. Um, okay, we do have a couple of rapid fire questions that we can get to. Uh, the first one is, what is the hardest workout that you have done recently? Oh, um, I would say we did 200, 150, 200, 200 times two, and then five 100s at the end. And they're in 12 second per 100 uh, intervals. So at this point in the season, that is really tough because we're still <laughs> flats. Uh, so we're pretty much sprinting uh, close to like, I'd say 90% each rep. And, you know, the lactic really builds up, but you got to hold strong and hold your form and coaches telling you the stuff you got to work on under fatigue and it, it, it is hard. And, you know, your, your minimal rest is just walk back and stuff. So. Yeah, it's, it's tough. That's brutal. That yeah. is brutal. It's it's funny. Like, my training group is a middle distance group, and we always will think, like, oh, I want to do a shorter workout. And then mm -hmm. every once in a while, we'll do something. And for us, shorter would be, like, 120s maybe. And yeah. I just afterwards. Like, yeah. The yeah. workout you just described is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it sounds, it doesn't sound as hard as it actually is. Like, when you go into it, you're like, okay, 200, 100, 200, 100. And you think it's all right, you can just take a rep by rep. But once you like hit a certain time, and, and the thing is too, is my group, we have some go-hards in my group. So sometimes I'll push the pace. And even though it's only supposed to be 12, we'll go like 11, sometimes even 10. And then you pay for it immediately in the next rep. So um, we had some of that this past week and we had some people, you know, fall off a little bit and throwing up a little bit. And, you know, it, it's just Jersey drums in the chat. He's my training partner, so he knows. He's one of the go-hards. <laughs> is that uh, Jerome? He's a troublemaker. Is he pushing the pace a little too hard? Well, we like to call him the Sandman because sometimes he'll he'll go hard and sometimes he'll hold back and then let it rip at the end of the rep. So we never know what you're going to get with Jerome. The moose. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we did have a user ask whether you focus your training on more the 100 and the 200 or the 200 and the 400. Uh, the one and the two, but in base season, I'd say more two and four, um, especially this year. That's one of the things that my coach thought that we could add to give me that 
you know, extra edge that I needed, especially in the last 50 of my race, um, something I need to improve. So we're going to try training more like the two and four. And I'm going to run a couple fours early in the year. So that's going to be fun. <laughs> but um, yeah, when we get into the thick of things, I'm definitely a one, two guy. That's, that's what I've always been. Um, but sort of for background training, just to get my, my speed endurance up, I'm going to add some more force for, for uh, 100 meter training. And uh, have you raced the four much in the past? How do you, how do you feel about that? I've ran it once. And it was the most nervous I've ever been in my life. More nervous than an Olympic final, more nervous than world championships, uh, OFSA, uh, NZs, anything. Um, just because. Oh, sorry. I think I lost your volume for a second. Can you yeah. hear me? Yeah. Okay. Right. Some someone Good called thing me. How you were born um, yeah. So it was more most nervous I've ever been, just because um, I didn't know what to expect. Uh, I didn't even hear the commands when they said "on your marks." I I just stood there and they're like "lane four, please get in your marks." <laughs> so, uh, man, yeah, I I actually ran pretty good. I ran forty six thirty three. So the one and only time I ran it, I I ran a pretty decent time. So I'm hoping to. You know, run it a couple times, get into the 45 this year, and uh, have that strength to build off for from the rest of the, the season. Awesome. Well, we'll uh, we'll definitely be looking forward to that. Maybe a, a YouTube breakdown of your journey to the 400. <laughs> a reaction video. Yeah. <laughs> get a camera in your face right after you cross the finish line. Get your oh god, your unfiltered. When I ran it the first time, I was on the ground for a good 10 minutes in just pure pain. Because he is, I was, man, I'll never forget that. Well, that means you, you did it right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I went for it. I went for it. I got out slow, but then I I just left it all out there. Nice. Well, maybe we'll see you in a, a 600 sometime soon then. Oh, no, 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 no. 400 is the limit. <laughs> Nothing <laughs> over that. Please. Oh, my gosh. Well, we we really appreciate you taking the time to, to have this chat and, uh, let our users kind of get a little peek into what your training is like. I saw someone ask, how long was your break? And we already covered that. No, no, no rest really over the holiday, just grinding. Mm -hmm. So super mm -hmm. inspirational. Although all our high schoolers should remember that that was not the case when you were in high school, you were definitely taking it a little bit easier, but just yeah. for anyone that joined late, the rest of this video, uh, everything's going to be posted on our streamlined Instagram account. So if you missed the first part or you want to go back and watch it again, because it was just so great, you definitely can. <laughs> and uh, make sure you check out Aaron's Instagram and his YouTube. And we featured you a couple times uh, on the meetup and on our streamline. So hopefully we can look forward to, to having you back again, because we always love chatting with you. So have a, have a great rest of your holiday. And we just can't wait to see what, what comes for you in 2022, 20, the 400, but specifically in the one and the two so looking Absolutely. forward to appreciate you for having me on and yeah go check out the streamlined video i just put on my youtube aaron kingsley brown on youtube or kingsley tv um like i said look out for my instagram stuff i got some new videos on the way hopefully you guys like it let me know in the comments and uh i try to make stuff that people want to see so thank you guys for tuning in and thanks for having me on awesome well and enjoy enjoy that first